just one word Calm the storm that surrounds me Just one word Darkness has to retreat Just one touch I feel the presence of heaven Just one touch My eyes were open to see My heart can't help but believe There's nothing that I God can't do It's not a mountain that He can't move well, Praise the name that makes a way there's nothing that our God can do. Just one word, you what's broken inside me. Just one word, you revive every dream. Just one touch, feel the power of heaven. Just one touch, my eyes were open to see, my heart can't help but believe, there's nothing that I can't do, it's not a mountain that he can't move, oh praise the name that makes a way, there's nothing that I can't do, there's nothing that I There's no power like the power of Jesus. Faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like His power. There's nothing that our God can do. Not a mountain that He can move. Oh, praise the name makes a way there's nothing that our God can do there's nothing that our God can do it's not a prison wall he can't break through oh praise the name that makes a way there's nothing that our God can do good morning Farmington First thank you for joining us for church from home. Welcome to our living room. We are so excited to worship with you this morning, wherever you are. So take a picture, post it on social media, tag Farmington First with the hashtag church from home. Yes, we would love to see that. We're gonna share some of those pictures. That's one way we can stay connected because we're all in this together. And until we can meet again in person, we're just grateful for the technology that allows us to continue to progress through the word and to stay connected. And so make sure to like and follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if this is your very first time joining us, mention that in the comments. We'd love to be able to celebrate that with you. So let's spend a little bit more time in worship together with a couple more songs. And then we have a Palm Sunday message for us today as we look forward to Easter just seven days away. Glad to have you today. songs be a sign we are here for you we are here for 
for you. Did your breath come from heaven? Fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts are open. Nothing near is here.
Well, good morning. It is week three of Church from Home, and today's Palm Sunday, which means Easter is a week away, and we're grateful to be able to join together this morning at 9.15. So uh, whether you're on your cell phone or in your living room, um, I pray that this morning's service is a blessing to you. Now, we all miss seeing each other, so please take a moment to share the pictures and to make the phone calls and FaceTime and join in on an online life group, all the ways that we can stay connected uh, because isolation is a killer. But it's not just that. It, we need to be able to continue to care for each other and meet needs as they arise, and these are the best ways for us to do that. There's also a couple of organized things that we're doing that you could be a part of. One is we're gathering food as we partner with Farmington United Methodist Church and their food pantry to feed our friends and neighbors. And so if you go to our social media accounts, you'll see the list of items um, that they collect, and you can bring those here to the church, and we'll distribute those to them. But there's also another one, and that is if you have the ability to sow, we've got about five different local health facilities that can use hand-sewn face masks. And so on our Facebook and Instagram are pictures with examples of what those look like and even instructions for how to make them. So if that's a skill you have, please use that and let's help serve and save lives right here in Northwest Arkansas. And so in this coming week, we had several things planned for Easter at first. One was a communion service that we would have had right here at 7 p.m. on Friday night here in our auditorium. And so here's what we're going to do in, in lieu of that. Um, Sarah and I would like to invite you to join us on the church's Facebook Live and Instagram Live. And we're going to do communion from our living room to yours. And so if you have the opportunity to get some grape juice and, and uh, you can use whatever you would like to use for, uh, for the bread. Um, on Wednesday, Sarah's actually going to do a Facebook Live and show how she makes our, her own unleavened bread which she's done for several years. If you want to be a part of that, you don't have to do that, but that's a way that you can join in as we take communion all over the community from our own living rooms. And that's going to be Friday night at 7 p.m. on our Facebook and our Instagram pages. So make sure you like and follow on those pages as well. And then next Sunday, Easter at First online right here at 9.15 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. We hope that you'll be a part of that and that you'll share it with um, your friends on social media so that they can partake in that as well this next Sunday. Now, this morning, let's get into the Word of God. Matthew chapter 21, if you've got a Bible there with you, we're going to look um, at the first 15 verses together. And here's what it says. As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethpage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Go into the village over there, he said. As soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with its colt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you're doing, just say the Lord needs them, and he will immediately let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, Tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him and threw their garments over the colt, and he sat on it. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this, they asked, and the crowds replied, it's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Let's stop right there for a moment. The Jewish people had been waiting for their new king, for the Messiah to come for hundreds of years. And during that time, they had been oppressed by other nations. And when Jesus arrives on the scene, Rome controls Israel and occupies Jerusalem. They had no king. They weren't allowed to have a king. And even the high priest they selected had to be signed off on by the leadership of Rome. And they kept the high priest's garments locked away from them. They were controlling every aspect of their life, even their worship of God. They built a giant fortress there in Jerusalem, not in the same neighborhood as the temple, not next door, but right up against it. A giant fortress where there would have been 600 Roman soldiers stationed at any given moment 
with columns that were 14 stories high. Rome was literally watching their every move and looking down on them even in their worship. But the Jews still held out hope. Honestly, they had no other choice but to hope. The prophecies had told that a Messiah would come. They said where he would come from, how he would come, riding on a donkey. And even when he would come, he was supposed to come at Passover. They waited and they hoped. Under the boot of Rome, they waited and they hoped because the prophecies had said the Messiah would come and he would deal with all of this. He would judge the ungodly. So on this day, a victory parade forms and Jesus is in the middle of it. And he rides into the city as their Messiah, as their new king. And they were so excited. It says the whole city was in an uproar. They thought for sure Jesus had come to begin the revolution to set them free. And he had, but then there was this surprising turn of events. Jesus doesn't ride to the fortress to confront the Romans. He doesn't go to the heart of the enemy occupation. He goes to the heart of their worship. He doesn't go to the fortress, he goes to the temple. And he doesn't confront the Roman leadership, he confronts the spiritual leaders. He goes to the temple and he confronts those who are buying and selling animals. He confronts the money changers and he drives them out. You see, everyone, every male had to pay the temple tax every year to redeem their soul, half a shekel. But not only that, at Passover time, families would come from all over to offer sacrifice. But it wasn't practical to bring a bull or a lamb or even doves a great distance so they would just wait and buy them when they got to the city. Really convenient. And so the people are there and you would think, man, they're just offering a convenience. Before this time, they, they had operated in the Kidron Valley outside of the temple and that's where you would go and you would exchange your money and you would purchase the animals for your sacrifice. You see, they wouldn't allow Roman or Greek coins to be given in the temple because they would have the face of a false god or one of the Roman emperors who they saw as a god on them. But they still wanted their money. So they would allow them to exchange it and pay a fee and part of it would go to the government and part of it would go to the priests. They still offered this service to them, but they were ripping them off. But it wasn't just that they were ripping them off. Even though the Roman and the Greek money wasn't accepted in the temple because of these images of false gods, they still wanted the money. They were going through the motions of denying these false gods, but they loved money. And their worship was phony. Their hearts were far away. So Jesus comes and he starts a revolution, but it's not a political one. It's a spiritual one. He doesn't go and confront the heart of the enemy who occupies. He comes and confronts the enemy within the church. You see, if Jesus were to ride into town today to cleanse the temple, he wouldn't come to this church building because this church building isn't the temple. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. If Jesus rode into town today, he would come to cleanse the temple. He would come to cleanse you and me. He would come to confront us, to confront our idols, to confront our sin. Anything that we hold more dearly than him. So we have to ask ourselves, what are our idols? If there's anything that this crisis that we are currently living through is doing, it is revealing our idols. What are the things that you're having the hardest time living without? And Jesus is coming to cleanse the temple. He does. He comes directly and personally 
to each one of us to cleanse us and to redeem us because he wants wholehearted worship. When Jesus walked into the temple on the day of his triumphal entry, the day we refer to as Palm Sunday, he said, the scriptures say that this will be a house of prayer, but you've turned it into a den of thieves. You're you're not legitimately worshiping God. You are pursuing your own interests. Jesus comes to each one of us directly and personally because he wants to cleanse and redeem us. Over the last couple of weeks, um, I've had the opportunity to uh, study differently and in different places. And I usually listen to music while I'm studying. A lot of time I listen to soundtracks from movies, uh, scores, because there aren't words and it's just kind of uh, interesting or dynamic or even dramatic music. But um, but my tastes are pretty varied. And the other day I was listening to Johnny Cash's um, American Number no. 4 album from 2002. And on it he does a cover of the song Personal Jesus by Depeche Mode. And his, his version is really interesting with just piano and guitar. And you, you may or may not be familiar with the song, but in it, it says, your own personal Jesus, someone to hear your prayers, someone who cares. And, and I've read what the original author of the song meant by it, what he had in mind when it was written. But that's the beauty of songs is that as we listen to them, we can make them mean whatever we want. But I started thinking about this idea of a personal Jesus because in the church, we throw around the idea of a, a personal relationship with Jesus all the time. But I think oftentimes it's less about a personal relationship with Jesus and it's more about our own personal Jesus. Not that we are made and being made into his image, but we are almost making him into our image. We want him to come and we want him to work and we want him to change things and to start a revolution. But we don't want him to confront what is going on in us. We want him to confront what's going on in everyone else. In this time right now, we're praying prayers and, and we rightfully should be praying prayers and asking God to work and, and to, to bring healing and, and to cleanse our nation, uh, literally cleanse it of, of, this, of this virus that is infecting and affecting so many people. We want God to do something. And I believe that God works and is working. But we want him to do what we want him to do. And just like on that day where Jesus rode into town and everyone thought he was going to go one way and he went another, he consistently does that. He he doesn't go the way we want him to go. He doesn't confront what we want him to confront. Instead, I believe he comes to each one of us and he reveals what it is in us that does not please him that is pulling us away from him, that's distracting us, the things that are our idols. the the sin and the ungodliness in us. Now, during this time where there's so much fear, there's so much anxiety and worry, this may seem like a strange message, but I'm gonna tell you this, in this season right now, Jesus is still riding into town and he's still confronting people and he's still calling for repentance. He's still cleansing hearts and lives and he still wants wholehearted worship. And as his followers, he demands it. So let's pause for a moment to pray together. From wherever you are, right there in your living room, watching this on your phone, wherever that may be, let me ask you this question. If Jesus came into your heart today, what would he confront? What are the idols he would find? What is the the darkness, what is the the thing that we've been clinging to and not surrendering to him? Let's pray together. Father, right now, I pray that you will move and work, that you will work in the hearts of people who are watching and are listening to this message, not because of the power of my words, but because of the power of your word. God, that we not think that we can somehow manipulate and pray and control you as our own personal savior. 
but God, that instead we would allow you to move and work. I know we have things that we want to see you do and, and we believe and we're praying for it, but God, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth and in Farmington and in communities all over this world as in heaven. Whatever it is in us today that you're confronting, that you're pointing out, when I ask the question, most of us don't have to do any soul searching. The, the, the issues come straight to mind. They come right up in that moment. And God, I pray that today we will lay those down before you. That we will allow you to drive out the greed and the ungodliness and the selfishness and the phoniness that maybe our worship has become. That God, in this time right now, that you would do a work that pleases you. I pray this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Hey, church family, during this time, online giving is such a blessing. If you haven't yet, go to farmingtonfirst.com slash giving and set up an online giving profile. You can also still use text to give by sending any amount to 84321. And here's the deal. Since this began as a church, we have yet to miss a weekly budget. That's because you're continuing to give faithfully and consistently, even in the midst of a crisis. Now, here's what I know. Some in our church family and across our community are starting to feel the effects of losing work and being laid off. But many of us are still in a position to give and to meet needs. This is our moment, church. So if you haven't yet, set up online giving. If you haven't yet, set up text to give. Use whatever means necessary to allow us to continue to serve the people around us. So grateful to be your pastor. Look forward to worshiping with you next week on Easter Sunday.